Oh, magic. So, uh, moving on to part two. This is the determination <clears throat> of a distribution coefficient. Okay, so basically what we're going to do here is uh, we have three options. We've got benzoic acid, uh, sodium benzoate, as well as succinic acid. And um, we are going to combine those solids as individual solids with um, water as well as methylene chloride. And ultimately what we're doing is trying to see how much dissolves in the water and how much dissolves in methylene chloride. And so what we're doing is kind of just one extraction, boil down that methylene chloride, see how much is in there. Okay, so we want about 50 milligrams of the solid, and so uh, what we're gonna do is place that inside of a conical vial. So again, remember a conical vial has this little cone on the bottom, and um, we wanna make sure that we have a good seal with a septum. So this little septum can actually come out, and your lid has a hole in it at that point, right? And so we wanna make sure that that's gonna be on there really well. Sometimes. If you don't close it properly, it can kind of pop out right here. And so you want to make sure that you have a, a septum that fits really nicely and uh, can close and make a good seal when you close the, the cap, okay? So let's go get our 50 milligrams of the, um, let's do benzoic acid first. All right, so remember, grab some white paper, you know, fold it in half, seal that up, fold that in half, make it nice and tight, so then you got these four squares. You guys ever play that in elementary school? Four square, that was my jam. All right, so place that on there. Remember, you wanna press the zero button or the, the tear button, so that way you get only the mass of the solid that we're adding to the white paper. Okay, so now I'm gonna open these back up. And we only want point, 0 0.05 grams. And this is also 50 milligrams. There is a setting on the scale that can, you can change it from grams and milli, to milligrams or vice versa. Um, I'm just gonna work with whatever one you want. Just make sure you get the right amount, right? And again, just as before, in part one, we don't need exactly 50 milligrams. We just to, we just need to record the exact amount. So I'm gonna get close to 50 milligrams, but I don't wanna spend five minutes weighing the solid up, okay? So let's see what we've got here. That's 39. So I'm gonna try and give it a little bit more. That. is so we'll close this to get our final reading and we've got point zero point zero four eight grams so that's definitely didn't take me very long and it's also very very close to what the, the procedure lays out for us which is point oh five zero grams so we're going to go with that. Make sure you record that because that's the value we're going to do our, use for our calculations. We won't be using 50 milligrams. We'll be using 48 milligrams. All right. So we've got our basically 48 milligrams of our benzoic acid here. I'll place that in the conical vial. And again... I spill any, I might have to restart because otherwise our distribution coefficient will not be calculated properly. You also want to make sure that you don't really leave anything behind, but also uh, keep the, those things in mind that those are definitely possibilities when we are um, as potential errors, okay? So uh, we need two mils of methylene chloride and we also need two mils of water. And so we can measure that out in a variety of ways, but just because I want to introduce something new to you, uh, you know how to use a graduated cylinder, so I thought, hey, let's introduce the micropipe header. Okay, so this is a micropipe header. 
This is a micropipette tip. Um, this is a thousand microliters, which is, it goes up to a thousand microliters. And it also, a um, thousand microliters is one milliliter. So you can adjust that setting here. So for example, there's this one right here at the top is one and then we have two zeros after that which makes it 1000 so i know it only reads 100 but the way this particular micro header reads is it only gives you the first three digits and so um, if you went zero nine eight for example that's 980 microliters so 980 microliters is the same as 0.98 milliliters and so you can adjust it accordingly and so now we, we only want two mils of each of those liquids. So what I'm gonna do is use this for, uh, use this twice to get me my two mils of methylene chloride and then two more times for the two mils of water. <clears throat> the, the proper way to use this is, there's, you can see this, uh, it's the stopping point right here at the bottom, but it actually goes a little bit further once you push a little bit harder. And so when you're, when you're drawing up the liquid, so, um, <clears throat> for example, here's the water. When you're drawing it up, you place, you push it down, and you place it in the liquid, and then you release. Okay, that's drawing up the liquid. Okay, when you're drawing up the liquid, you only want to push it down to the first stopping point. Okay, and then when you expel the liquid like this, you want to push it all the way down. Okay, so what I mean by that is, now that we've got it up, I've got my liquid in here, and now, if, here's the first stopping point, and now I go a little bit further, just to get the last little, that last residual amount of solvent out of the micropipette. Okay, and so, <clears throat> um, it's really important to accurately measure uh, your 1,000 microliters or your 980 microliters it's really important that you do that uh, drawing up the liquid and, and expelling the liquid properly. Otherwise, uh, if you push it all the way down to draw up the liquid, it's not gonna be accurately measured, okay? So, since we already got our water, let's go ahead, and I like to tilt it because it gives me more liquid on the, in the corner. It's a nice place to um, kind of draw up the liquid and then you want to do it slowly. You also want to make sure that the tip of the micropipetter is not blocked by anything. And so there's one mil. Okay. And now let's do another. And squeeze it all the way out. That's our two mil. So there's also this button right here. This button right here actually pushes this metal piece down. See it moving up and down. And it kind of allows me to push off this micro pipette tip. Um, and so now I can get another one for my methylene chloride because I need two more mils of that. And so let's go for it. I will do it same way. But remember methylene chloride is kind of weird in that it jumps out because it's got a high vapor pressure. So uh, we just want to be careful when we're, when we're doing it, you can see it dripping. And so time your drips if you have to. There's one mil. And there's two mils. Okay, so we are all set for this portion. Now what we want to do is pretty much the same thing that we did last uh, on the caffeine extraction. We're going to cap it, making sure that our septum is covering the tip of that or the top of that cap really well. And we're going to go ahead and shake it until that solid goes away. Let's see. Can't really see the solid floating around too much because. It's right at that liquid liquid interface right here where you can see the two layers. And so um, I'm just gonna shake it until it goes away. Okay, it should be, let's just call it a minute, okay? 
All right, so I went ahead and let that settle after I shook it for about a minute. And um, all of the solid is dissolved. Good to go, right? So now what we want to do is transfer the methylene chloride layer to a test tube, and then we're going to dry it out with sodium sulfate. Okay, so again, now, uh, as I mentioned in the previous section with the extraction of caffeine, sometimes it can get confusing which layer is the organic layer, i.e. methylene chloride, and which layer is the aqueous layer, water. Okay, and so before we had four and two, uh, four mils of water and two mils of methylene chloride, so it was really easy to just visually see which volume was smaller and which was therefore going to be uh, the methylene chloride. However, this time we have two mils of each. And so if we aren't recording our densities properly, um, we can double check by adding a drop of methylene chloride or water and seeing where it goes. And so this is something that I mentioned before, we couldn't really see it in the, in the um, centrifuge tube because it's opaque. So, but now we've got this nice clear-ish, <laughs> Uh, it's kind of scratched, but this clear um, conical vial. And so we should be able to easily see where that drop goes. If I can get the light right, but keep an eye on the drop of methane chloride and see where it goes. Okay. Ooh, that one was good right there. Did you see a drop? Ooh, that's tough. It's pretty hard to see. Occasionally, you can see it uh, drop to the bottom. And what that means is that the methylene chloride is going to the bottom. The methylene chloride is the bottom layer. And so now what we want to do is just transfer that bottom layer only to the clean, dry test tube. Okay, and then we can dry it and we'll be done. All right, so that was pretty much all of it. And so we have like a tiny, tiny bit in the bottom, which maybe I can get. That definitely takes practice to get. So um, if it happens to you, probably wouldn't sweat it because uh, when it comes to the dexterity of working with one hand uh, as well as kind of manipulating the pipette bulb that's just going to take practice or uh, you might get it right away who knows but um, you got you to get that touch and it, it doesn't even always work well for me um, you just kind of try and then see what happens and then adjust accordingly so now that we've got our methylene chloride in here we're going to go ahead I don't see two layers, so that's good. We're gonna go ahead and add sodium sulfate. Remember, methane, uh, so <laughs> methane chloride needs to be dried with sodium sulfate. Uh, in this particular experiment, you can use other drying agents, but we're just going to use a um, tiny bit, a little spatula full, not even a spatula full, sorry, like just the tip of it. Um, this is a much smaller amount than the six mils of methane chloride that we were drying before, so just keep that in mind when you are drying it. Also notice on the wall here that the methane chloride dried and left some, what we presume is the uh, benzoic acid, right? So left some of that behind. We want to make sure that we try and get that when we are transferring our stuff because we don't want to leave anything behind because that will ultimately ruin our calculations for the distribution coefficient. However, errors are impossible to kind of overcome and you're always gonna have some. So just keep that in mind and record that kind of stuff in your notebook. So that way when it comes time to do the calculations, you can kind of see where your yield went. So we added a little bit of methane chloride. You can see that some of that stuff clumped on the wall. So there's water, okay? But um, some of it's also tumbling, okay? And so what we wanna do is kinda let that hang out for a minute. 
and um, wait for that to dry. Give it just like a minute or two. And then we can transfer the methylene chloride to a clean, dry, pre-weighed conical vial that we will then evaporate the methylene chloride in a water bath, which you should have already gotten started, which you totally did. Um, and then um, we'll weigh out the solid and see how much we've got. Okay. First things first, let's wait for it to dry. Okay, teared that, right? That's zeroed out. Now we're gonna weigh this bad boy out. See how much the conical vial weighs before we add the methane chloride that should contain benzoic acid. That's 18.584 grams for that conical vial before we add the methylene chloride containing the benzoic acid. All right, so now we are pretty good. What we're gonna do is use this conical vial that I pre-weight and transfer the methane chloride into it. We've got that. There we go. Now what I want to do is actually add a little bit of methane chloride to the tube just to get some of that off the wall because I don't like the fact that it's not uh, all in the in the vial because then our calculations would be off, uh, at least obvious, right? This is just clearly going to affect the numbers. And so let's go ahead and transfer a little bit methane of the methane chloride here. Now, not gonna get everything, but by doing this, I can at least get more out of there and then minimize the amount of loss, okay? All right, so now what we get to do is go and boil this down. All right, so we've got our conical vial, we've got our clamp. Now, we want to make sure we get this guy really clamped really well. Also, when you're clamping it, you wanna try and clamp more towards the top if possible. That way, when you place it in the hot water bath, see this is what I mean by more towards the top, this little prong right here, you want it at the top, so that way the bottom portion of this can be submerged in the liquid as much as possible. So for example, if it was only clamped a little bit, like kind of in the middle of the vial, we wouldn't be able to completely submerge the, the liquid that can, or like at least the portion of the vial that the liquid occupies. And so the more it's submerged, the faster it's going to uh, boil off and so when it comes to this particular process right now like faster is definitely much better for our sanity so uh, We do have to be patient though. You see how it's kind of boiling You want to make sure that it doesn't boil over otherwise you're gonna lose some solid material and that's gonna ruin your numbers So you definitely got to be careful As we know boiling the boiling point of methane chloride is really low just give it a warm hug and it'll start boiling. So, gotta be careful. Um, all right, so basically it looks like it's pretty dry now. Uh, you wanna take a look inside. You can see some solid material. You can kind of see it on the walls as well. And so what we're going to do, you can look inside just to kind of visually see if you have anything obvious in there. And so it doesn't appear to be, or there doesn't appear to be any methylene chloride in there, nothing obvious. So what I'm gonna do is, or what I'm doing is drying this. And we're gonna let that sit in the hood for a minute so that it can cool down to room temperature, but also so that it can 
Here, let me take this for you. <laughs> so <coughs> you never want to take something that you've been heating directly out of the hood. And part of the reason is because uh, you have, you were just boiling off methane chloride, right? So there could be some residual methane chloride vapors. So you want that to hang out in the hood a little bit before you take it out of the hood. Um, so as not to expose yourself or your lab mates or me to the methane chloride vapors, the residual. So it's going to be a tiny amount, right? But if every single student does it, then there's going to be a lot of methylene chloride potentially throughout the lab. And so we don't want that. So anytime you're heating, boiling down something, leave it in the hood to let it cool. Um, and then you can take it out. Okay. All right. So now, ooh, look at all that solid. All right. Let's check it out. Let's see how much we've got in here. So what we've done or we've come to the scale. You want to zero that scale out. Place this beautiful vial with all that benzoic acid inside in there. Sorry. Oh, I'm losing my losing it. 18.623 grams for the vial plus benzoic acid. Now we need to find the difference. Just basically subtract the mass of the vial. We'll figure out how much benzoic acid we have in there, and then you can do your calculation for the distribution coefficient. All right, so the, the next portion of the part B, I'm gonna just do succinic acid. And uh, so here's the bottle. You can see that it's dangerous and corrosive. And I already weighed out 53 milligrams, and so go ahead and record that mass, and we're gonna do the same thing we did with benzoic acid, only faster. I'm not gonna really show you every step, just because you can kind of, you already saw it, we're doing the exact same thing. If you were here in the laboratory, you would only choose one, but since we've got the luxury of me doing it um, and the video, we are going to do all of them. All right, and last but not least, we got sodium benzoate, so uh, warning, harmful, boom. And weighed out solid 52 milligrams, so go ahead and record that mass. I'm gonna throw it in a vial again, just going to do the same extraction uh, as before and boil down that methylene chloride. So we'll see what the mass is in the end. All right, so what we want to do is zero the scale, get this conical vial, and weigh it. So this is for the succinic acid. So we're going to put the methylene chloride that we've extracted in here into a vial that weighs 20.308 grams. And this is the vial before the methylene chloride and succinic acid, or supposed succinic acid, is um, added to this. So let's see what happens. All right, so we got the succinic acid vial hanging out there um, just above the hot water because I want to go ahead and get the benzoic acid portion started. So uh, don't want it to pop or boil over or anything like that. So we got a good heat that I can kind of let it hang out by itself, um, but also boil down that methylene chloride. So this is legit like a warm hug for the methylene chloride. So it's gonna be slow and controlled, which is really important. Okay, now let's check out the uh, benzoic acid portion. All right, so what we need to do is weigh this here vial. Conical vial. So this is the vial for the benzoic acid. It weighs 18.547 grams, and this is before we add the methylene chloride extract uh, that we use to extract the benzoic acid. Okay, so before mass, 18.547 grams. Okay, so I'm about an hour in, I think. I don't know, I lost track of time. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, but basically, I wanted to kind of point out a couple things. So um, you want to kind of keep an eye on your gloves. Uh, whenever you're working in a laboratory, make sure there's no discoloration in your glove. Um, and then you, if you spill any chemicals on them, immediately take them off, toss them in the trash, wash your hands. So uh, if there's no obvious spill on your glove uh, or anything like that, um, have any of you ever worked in a restaurant? So uh, for me, I worked in a restaurant forever and I think it was like every hour, it's like salad bowl change, you gotta throw out the salad bowls that they kind of, what they tossed. I worked at Island's restaurant actually. Um, they have one in Santa Barbara now, but 
you let's say you have this barbecue chicken salad they typically make the barbecue chicken salads in the same bowl boom toss it up uh after an hour they're like or maybe even half an hour i don't remember but they're like salad bowl change get that bowl out of here it's nasty wash it uh let's get a new one in uh, and so that's kind of what I've, I like to employ in my lab. Uh, every so often, uh, maybe like, depending on what we're doing, it could be like 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, I'll just be like, you know, glove change, wash your hands. Uh, if you haven't done it recently, you need to toss your gloves, wash your hands. Also wanna, usually it could be like 30 minutes, check your gloves, see if there's any discoloration, and then maybe like an hour, uh, whatever, wash your hands uh, and change your gloves. But the point is to regularly toss those gloves and wash your hands so as not to have any issues with uh, chemicals, but also just practice good hygiene. So especially right now, wash those hands. All right, so I got the succinic acid vial chilling there. It's cooling in the hood. And I also have the benzoic acid vial sitting in the hot water bath. Uh, boiling down hopefully slowly but surely one thing I want to point out though is um, this has actually been hanging out for a while but I'll still hold it inside of the hood it doesn't look like there's any obvious solid in here like especially like the benzoic acid and so um, I want you to think about whether or not this is expected or um, or if this there's some sort of an error Look, I'm, I'm making these videos and I want them to be as realistic as possible. So I'm not gonna do it over again and just be extra rigorous or like do what I would normally do in order to ensure that uh, I get the results that I, I know should happen. I wanna make sure that you guys get the experience that is that you would get if you were in here doing the lab. And so that means getting messed up results or maybe not. Like something that you just saw benzoic acid got a bunch of solid. Now, succinic acid doesn't get any at all. Is that expected? Um, think about it. Think about the structure of benzoic acid, succinic acid, and, and sodium benzoate when you're doing this particular portion of the lab. One thing I also want to point out is, let's look if we can. Here, let me adjust this. <coughs> all right, so try and focus on this solid material inside of here. You see the look of this solid down here. It's nice and it's pretty granular. Uh, sorry, my shaky arm, but here, let me see if I can make that better. Um, it's pretty granular. And so when you look up here, however, you've got some more like a, like a powdery solid here at the top uh, and kind of a mixture of like granular and powdery going working its way from the bottom of the tube up and especially these small powdery portions now I want to point this out because as you squirt the methylene chloride extraction uh, into this tube it drips down the wall of the tube, and as it does that, some evaporates, right? And so if it did contain any succinic acid, perhaps that's how we could lose it, okay? So uh, we can learn a lot from our successes, but I feel like we can learn more from our failures, and so that's why I wanna point this out. Um, we will still weigh out the mass of the vial, but there's no obvious solid. However, there does seem, seem to be a solid in here that doesn't look like sodium sulfate. So, just want to point that out for you to think about. Alright, so this is the vial containing, uh, this is where the succinic acid and meth methylene chloride should have been in. Uh, and then we boil that down and then we got 20.308 grams. You want to compare that to the original mass of the vial that was used for the succinic acid extraction and compare any difference between the two is going to be the uh, mass of succinic acid. Like I said, I, there's no solid in there that's visible. Um, so if there, I would say that if there's any negligible uh, difference, it could just be due to error. It could be due to maybe a water droplet, a fingerprint, or um, some dust even on the, on the vial. There's definitely no obvious solid inside of 
be vile. Let me show you. You can't. Yeah, you can't really see. But yeah, nothing. Okay. So think about that and the potential errors. All right. So here's the benzoic acid vial. Been hanging out in here for a minute. There doesn't seem to be any solid in here either. So creating D. Uh, taking a look back at my, uh, my uh, what is this called, a test tube, <laughs> uh, there doesn't seem to be really any obvious solid or anything that's in there, um, so maybe that's the way, the way this is supposed to be, I don't know, let's think about it, but let's go ahead and uh, it's been drying for a while now, so let's wait. All right, so here's the mass of the vial that we used for the extraction of benzo uh, sodium benzoate. So um, we've got 18.547 grams for that vial that was supposed to contain some kind of ben sodium benzoate, maybe, or at least that's what we're using for our calculations to determine the distribution coefficient. So uh, use that, at, this is the after, so use the before mass of the vial and then uh, find the difference and then use that for your calculations. If you find a, some sort of significant difference, um, you should probably reevaluate that because there's no solid in here. Like, there's no solid in here at all. So, um, it's pretty much zero. Okay. Okay. So we've pretty much completed part two: determination of a distribution coefficient for benzoic acid, succinic acid, as well as sodium benzoate. Um, what you want to do now is, in terms of like your report, so obviously you want to think about the potential errors, uh, you also you want to do those calculations to figure out what the values are for those distribution coefficients with methylene chloride and water, right? Um, one thing you should also do, which will make a great, make for like a great addition to your lab report is trying to find some literature values. So, um, is there some, is this, has somebody already completed this experiment in a, in a credible journal perhaps? Uh, not just like on, um, not necessarily, like Wikipedia isn't terrible, but oftentimes they should have citations. So if you're gonna use Wikipedia, at least refer to the citation and make sure it's legit. But not something like Chegg or something like that. So like where students are reporting their data. Um, I want some a credible source. So uh, some sort of scientific journal, peer reviewed ideally. And let's see what the distribution coefficient is for these three substances. But specifically with methylene chloride and water because you might come across some other organic solvent with water um, and you don't want to use that distribution coefficient as your reference because it's going to be different with methane chloride. So, but it is really good to have that literature reference um, moving forward because that's proof of concept, right? That's proof that you you did this correctly, you did a great job, and um, the results are good. Okay, so go ahead and handle that business. Let me know if you have any questions.